What's up y'all? It's about time we did another wild game and fish cooking video. Uh, this time I've compiled together some stuff that I put in the sack. We'll get to this in a minute. Uh, today I'll be cooking deer steak, wild turkey breast, and some bass fillets. The main point of this video is to show you all my five favorite seasonings for cooking various different methods of cooking but five top five seasonings I use I use these more than anything else uh, they're all simple and they're all easy to cook with but they're delicious I mean they're not I'm not gonna say they're the best out there there's so many options different spices and seasoning blends but you gotta you gotta narrow it down to something that you use all the time and this is what I use all the time all right so let's just get into it these are my top five my official favorite seasonings and I'll show you how I cook everything here when we get through this so uh, that's not it um, number one salt and pepper no expl no explanation needed there you can't go wrong with it number two this is in no particular order other than salt and pepper this is no particular order but number two Tony Chattery's Creole seasoning, great on everything. And I mean, just the smell of it's amazing. Fish, chicken, turkey, deer, beef. So this is like seasoned salt. It's like your salt and pepper that's better than salt and pepper, I guess, if you're looking for something extra. For fish, if I'm deep frying fish, you're gonna get the grease hot. I prefer to use peanut oil, but if you're gonna get the grease hot, and deep fry some fish fillets or some fish nuggets. I call it the Louisiana blue bag because they've got a couple different flavors, I guess, of fish fry. And the blue bag is my favorite. So Louisiana blue bag. None of this is sponsored. This is just stuff that I used that I found in the store, tried it, and liked it. Chef Paul's black and red fish magic. This is amazing stuff it's a cajun seasoning it's not really spicy it's salty uh it's good on grilled food and it's also good for what it's made for which is blackening on a very hot skillet which we're going to do that as well and then last but not least if you're deep frying anything it's good on fish but if i'm deep frying wild turkey or chicken fried deer steaks or something like that or pretty much anything that needs just a good crunchy breading i use this lefties fish and chicken mix. They do make a hot and spicy version, but I don't use that because if I want to make it hot and spicy, I add the uh, heat later. And that's for another video, Nashville hot chicken or wild turkey. That's for another video that I'll do here soon. So let's put these back in the sack here. I'm going to get the grease ready, get the grill ready. I've got some deer meat, some turkey thawed out and a couple fresh fillets off a largemouth bass we're gonna cook as well but I've got to get all this stuff set up so I will see y'all here in just a second all right first we're gonna be grilling some deer and turkey but uh, we got some backstrap medallions this deer steak I'm gonna do salt and pepper don't be afraid to put that salt on a little bit thick off the sides of it too. It's a pretty decently thick steak and we're just salting the outside so just think of like soft pretzels. They got a lot of salt in the outside but nothing on the inside so don't be afraid to go a little heavy on the salt. For the other one, just to switch it up, I've cooked deer steak like this a few times and it's amazing. A little Tony Chatcheries on this one. Kind of spread that out a little bit. To keep it from sticking to the grill, give it a little bit of something. This will also help give it a better crust. But I like to put a little olive oil, turn them around a few times, get a little bit of coating of oil. Y'all can probably hear my chickens behind me. I'm gonna take some of this wild turkey breast. Now, I cut it into strips. I cut across the grain, which will make it a lot more tender. Not that it's very tough, piece of meat but it is tougher than domestic turkey than store-bought turkey so it's, it's kind of similar to a steak in that sense where you cut across the grain it's a lot more tender I'm not cooking in all of it I'm saving the rest of it for another method we'll do here in a minute 
I'm gonna do half of it in Tony Chatteries. Flip it over. And then the other half I'm gonna do in Chef Paul's Black and Redfish Magic because they're both amazing. Do both sides. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the olive oil on these so they don't stick to the grill and they get that nice crust on the outside. Dang, it already smells good and it barely hit the grill. And our turkey strips. The turkey will cook a little faster. It might not because we're not going to cook the deer meat all the way through. When the turkey's ready to flip, it'll look it'll look like it's halfway cooked if you cut strips like this. You see it's uh it it's white around the edges and it's starting to show through the middle just a little bit. Only the middle is still pink. Turkey should have a nice little crust to it, but not be overcooked. This is looking perfect so far. This one's going to be done first because it's smaller. You see it's still squishy. Still very much red in the middle. But it's going to change quick. It cooks fast. That one's got a little bit of salt crust to it. If you let your steak sit for a while and let the salt soak in, it won't have that. But I'm not worried about it. We're going to go ahead and take this turkey off. I know she's done. All right, the deer meat. Still got some give to it. This, Like I said, this one's going to be done first. It's a smaller piece. Got a little more time, but not much. Like literally like maybe 30 seconds. If you're not sure about like testing it by seeing how squishy it is, uh, you kind of learn that through trial and error. That's how I did. I overcooked a bunch of steaks by cooking them too long. But uh, get a little meat thermometer like this one and stick it in there. You don't want to go past 120, 125 uh, if you want it nice and red in the middle. Uh, 160 I guess is well done. So, this is the finishing touch here. Put a piece of butter on top and let it melt. You want to let your steak rest for a minute anyway before you eat it. That butter's just going to add that little bit extra juiciness that it needed. I don't know if you could tell, but that's just tender, cutting across the grain like that. Oh yeah. All right, now the moment of truth. See, we got a little bit of red juice coming out. That's perfect. If it's too much red juice, it's going to be really rare. If you like it that way, that's cool. But if there's no red juice, you overcooked it. So I guess I'm going to cut into the good steak first because it's thicker. A little pink. Looks like they both turned out pretty good. The thing with deer meat is, if you cook it well done, a steak like this, it's going to be very tough and very dry and not enjoyable. That's why I keep saying you got to cook it with at least a little bit of red in the middle. If you don't like it with red, if you just can't stand the thought of it being red in the middle, I've got another method where it's cooked well done and still delicious. So we'll get to that here in just a minute. All right, the camera doesn't want to focus, but there we go. Mm-hmm. Deer meat, excuse me. Deer meat does not have fat like a beef steak. My favorite steak, admittedly, is ribeye. It's got a lot of marbling, a lot of fat. Deer doesn't have that, but that doesn't mean the flavor isn't there. The flavor's there, you just cannot overcook it or it gets very dry. And if you insist on cooking it well done, I'm gonna show you how to do that right. All right, now next up is blackened fish. So I got a little iron skillet here. You can use a regular skillet. Just make sure it's smoking hot. Now, this has got seasoning on it, like oils and stuff, so the oil will start to smoke a little when it's hot enough. If you're using a clean skillet, like a regular skillet, uh, maybe just put a little bit of oil on it just so you can tell when it's hot enough. 
But you do want to do this outdoors. Uh, it's going to make a lot of smoke if, if you're blackening fish or you can blacken turkey or chicken like this too. But I've got two fillets of largemouth bass. Came off a of fish that my buddy came over here to my pond and caught yesterday. Used to think largemouth wasn't that good eating, but I think I just didn't know how to cook it because it's pretty dang good. It's in the sunfish family, like bluegill, shellcracker, crappie. Take the fillet and give it a good healthy coating, just kind of like I did with the turkey. Give it a good healthy coating of that black and seasoning. Make sure it sticks good. Turn it over. I'm not caging. Maybe I'm doing it my own way. Maybe I'm doing it a little different than somebody else may do it. But this has worked perfectly well for me. So now we got filet that is coated nicely. So now what I do is take the melted butter and we're just gonna, same, with, same as I did with the olive oil, just coat the fish in the butter. All right, y'all probably can hear the rain. Literally just one cloud went over and started raining like instantly. So uh, luckily we're under cover for this part. The fish is gonna be the same as when I grilled the, the turkey. When it basically pretty much looks halfway cooked. It's wide around the edges and uh, you go ahead and flip it. Oh, I missed that. That's perfect. I can't pick the skillet up. My hand is too hot. I'm gonna set her down over here somewhere. This is blackened fish, the blackened largemouth bass. I like to cook smallmouth this way, walleye, even catfish. You can also use the blackened seasoning and grill it just like I did the turkey. That's amazing as well. But the blackening gives it a little bit better crust on that skillet. White and flaky. Not mushy, not dry. All right, so while the grease is heating up, we're gonna go ahead and get our Ziploc bags. You can use bowls. First bag's gonna be for our eggs. I'm just gonna use two because I'm not frying very much tonight. I don't have a crowd to feed tonight. Let the chickens eat the shells. These are store-bought eggs. My chickens aren't old enough to lay eggs yet. I'm going to use that for most of the stuff. You don't have to use eggs. Eggs will give it a thicker, crunchier crust. The next bag we're going to fill with lefties. Or not fill it, but I'm just going to use enough to cook with what I got. And then the last bag, of course, we're filling with the Louisiana Blue Bag Fish Fry. And I'm not going to put very much in this at all because all I got is that one bass fillet left. I'm going to start with this bass fillet need to dip it in eggs for just a second. We just need enough to just thinly coat the filet. Should look nice and coated in cornmeal. I'm going to set this down on this Dixie plate here. Next one we'll do the rest of this turkey. This might take up the rest of the egg wash, but that's okay. The last thing I'm not going to use egg wash. I'll get to that in a second. The last thing's the surprise. We're going to put in lefties fish and chicken mix and shake it up and make sure everything's coated nicely. Right. You're going to get messy doing this. My hands always get messy when I fry a bunch of food, but it's worth it. Trust me. All right, now, last but not least, this is what I mentioned earlier about cooking deer steak well done. What I've done here is I've got two little medallions of backstrap, just like the ones I grilled, but instead of grilling those whole, I took them and I took a mallet and I pounded them out until they were almost a quarter inch thick, quarter inch to a half inch thick, depending on your preference. And we're gonna deep fry them, chicken fried steak. Good on a biscuit, good by itself. Dip it in ranch, put gravy over it, whatever you wanna do. This is pretty dang good. This is probably the only way I will ever eat a deer steak well done. So this one's not gonna get egg wash. So this is essentially a minute steak. 
the deer steak that's been pounded out really thin. This was this was about an inch and a half thick before I pounded it out. All right, we're right at 350. We'll start out with the turkey. Looking like the turkey's ready. Let it drain out. While that cools off, we'll get the next batch ready. So for this round, we're going to do that last bit of bass and the two deer steaks. And then we'll be done. Finally. off this heat. That bass is already splitting apart. There's white flakes. This stuff's good. We got chicken fried deer steak and chicken fried woodland chicken. Turkey. Alright, well there you have it. I'm going to take a piece of this bass. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it as well as I can, but that is perfect. Still very hot. Mm. Mm. Usually we have a few buddies over here and we'll cook a bunch of stuff, but I wanted to take the time just to make a video for y'all to show you how I cook fish and wild game and how to do it simple. Um, obviously the deep frying is a little bit of a task to get everything set up and make a big mess, but it's still pretty simple, especially the grilling and blackening is the most simple out there. So next time you're scratching your head thinking, oh, I've seen all these recipes, how do I cook my deer steak? And, and, I mean, just keep it simple. It's really, like wild game is better than we give it credit for because, no offense to anyone, but a lot of people don't know how to cook it. And for a long time, neither did I, especially with fish, because I started fishing at a young age. I didn't know how to cook it. And I used to think largemouth bass was not good eating because I suck at cooking. So hopefully this gives you all a little bit of insight on it just the basics of cooking wild game. I'm not a chef. I worked at a restaurant for six years, but that doesn't make me a chef. I'm far from it. But if you keep it simple and just keep in mind, you know, just take, use a little common sense. Don't overcook things that shouldn't be overcooked. Use good seasonings. Make sure your grill or your grease or your skillet is hot enough before you put it in there so you get that crust. That's all there is to it. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching and uh, I will see y'all next time.